Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, here to share a dream. Now, I just received a message from one of our YouTube viewers, and it inspired me to share this dream because of the prayer request she put in. Listen to this. Now, you know that I've been a widow now since 2013, and I have chosen not to get into dating and flirtatious flirtatious encounters and all of that i really don't have time for nonsense i don't have time for games played them when i was young now i'm old i put away childish things hopefully you know we all think that we're there until the situation arises so let me share this dream with you and this is either a, a warning to me to you somebody but this is what I thank, this is why I thank God for godly friends and godly counsel. In this dream, now this is a dream, in this dream, my friend and I go to visit a couple and their family. When we go, the wife is busy chatting on the phone and the kids are busy playing in the front room where she is. The father, on the other hand, the husband, he is in a den in the back of the house. Now, check it out. We come in, we sit and chat. The whole time we're chatting, I'm forgetting this man is married. And the magnetism I'm feeling is of a high level of chemistry. I'm trying to choose my words carefully. Um, this guy seemed, I mean, he had the, the sweetest personality. He came across so genuine. He came across as a kind caring young man looked like he was somewhere between his 40s and 50s so he was definitely a little younger than I am but in the dream I was younger yeah you know it's a dream yeah okay so here we are chatting away and now it's time for us to go so my friend and I get up and we say our goodbyes. And he says, oh, well, you don't have to go. You can sit if your friend has to leave because we came in two separate cars. So I'm thinking, okay, why not? Hmm, why not? Yeah. Well, check it out. As we started to chat and my friend is on her way getting into the car. I am feeling hormones screaming. Yeah, for some fizz ed, baby. And I'm not talking about Jim. <clears throat> yeah, so he is letting me know that he's attracted to me. And my friend toots the horn. And I go out to see what's wrong. I'm thinking maybe she can't start a car. So I tell the guy I'll be right back. And my pocketbook and everything is still in the house. So I go to see what she needs. And she says, she says this, godly counsel now. And I say to somebody out there who is struggling with the urge. Oh, yeah. Uh. She says this to me very soberly. I don't understand. The man is married. Why does he need you to stay behind and chat a while? Isn't there something a little fishy about his intentions to you? Don't you think you need to go inside, get your pocketbook? and come and follow me and let's go home i'll wait for you it 
wrong of such truth because I knew what I was feeling. Now, sometimes, let me warn you of this. Sometimes the attraction you feel, the, the desires that you're getting from this uh, flirtatious encounter is not necessarily coming from you. Oftentimes, they transfer their feelings of desire for you. And the atmosphere gets so heated that you start feeling like it's your feelings when you didn't even go there for that intention or with that intention in mind. So, listen, I went inside. I didn't say anything. I got my pocketbook, walked into the living room, told his wife goodbye, told the kids goodbye, headed out the door, said, see you later, got to go. Because I knew she told me the truth. And I got in my car and started that baby up in a hurry. So this is what I'm saying to you. Now we're back to Pat's two cents. Okay. What I'm saying to you is, ladies, be very careful about the, the uh, extra friendliness of another woman's husband who says they're in Christ. They may want to come across as being very helpful. They, they see that you need help in your house and they want to come over and fix things for you. Now you have no idea. Their wife may have been asking them to fix this, that, and the other for years. And they're always getting ready to get to it. But they see something exciting on the other side of the fence in your house. And while they're taking care of business and fixing this, that, and the other, they're lining up their schemes on how they're going to get their hooks into you. Be very careful. It might be better to pay somebody to do the work so that that married man has no reason to come to your house or even know where you live. He has no need of your phone number, and you have no need of his. Somebody's being warned. When I woke up, I said, I got to do a video on this. And thanks to the email I got to the YouTuber, it reminded me of that dream by what she said. So, I say to you ladies, be careful. And... You men who may be single or widowers, you be careful because while you, or you may be married, while you're trying to follow Christ and you're trying to be faithful or celibate, there are ladies out there lurking, baby, and they're sniffing you out. You may have money, you may be well established, you may just look good. Doesn't take much of a reason when a person has feet that are swift to mischief. So if a lady is always a damsel in distress waiting for you to come to her rescue, watch yourself, buddy. You don't need her phone number, you don't need to come to the rescue call the pastor or get a couple of brothers to go with you and y'all got somewhere to go when you get through doing whatever she needs because sometimes those are nothing but traps they lay the traps the bible calls them snares they lay them they're in they're laying in wait for you and in essence, come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. But they're not there to devour you. They're there to mm, enjoy your delicacies. And your delicacies do not belong to them to enjoy. You keep your delicacies up in behind that zipper. You keep the zipper up and your pants up. And you stay as far away from that woman as the east is from the west. 
because listen this is what the devil will do he will use distractions both you ladies and men that the devil has a, a beam set on he's aiming at you he sees the calling on your life he sees the assignment he knows god is getting ready to bust something loose in you through the anointing what better way to douse that flame out than to light another flame that ain't a holy one and get you so sidetracked and so off your beaten path that guess what whatever God had is in the wind because you're <laughs> Your, your attention is blown. I mean, God is totally lost. Your attention because you are, ooh, beep, 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 beep. All of a sudden, you're, you're, you're focused, baby, but you're not focused on God anymore. So be very careful. That's my warning. I'm not going to drag out the subject. You know what I mean. You're grown. Yeah. Be careful. God bless you.